and talking about just, you know, coming bloody full circle is you actually ended up magna cum laude when you finished your studies as a chiropractor. You, you, you came a massively long way. Obviously, you just mentioned all these other things you're busy with. Was it was that like a, a good, a big moment for you? Well, I can't say that the, I had done well in, in school prior to professional school and then in professional school. So it wasn't like a, I was grateful for that. It wasn't mm. like the super amazing thing. I'm very grateful because I knew I had one of the top grades. I had a desire to learn and not everybody had that same desire. I mean, whatever they requested in school, I always multiplied it times 10. So if you have a textbook to read, I'd read 10 of them at the minimum. Mm. And I always, uh, the, the clinical requirements I multiplied times 10. I, I didn't want to be average. I wanted to excel. And so I, uh, so when I got that, I wasn't overly surprised because of the work I'd put into it. But um, I'm very grateful for that because I don't know if anybody really asks you when you're in practice whether or not, you know, were you at the top of the class or bottom of the class? I don't think they ever ask you that. It didn't really matter to anybody else, but it, it, was, a, it was a sign that I made the effort. And uh, so I'm grateful for that. Yeah. But I, I uh, see what happened is when I went, I left Hawaii, I flew back to Los Angeles. I hitchhiked back to Texas. Uh, and right when I, before I got to my parents' house, my dad and my sister drove by and didn't recognize me. No had way. Long hair, long hair. They didn't even know who I was. <laughs> they went driving right past me and I waved at them. They thought I was kind of a weird character on the street there. I get home and my mom and dad, uh, they welcomed me home and they said, you know, uh, why don't you take a GED while you're here, which is a high school equivalency exam and I thought well I got nothing to lose if I pass it great if I got a, I got a high school degree if I don't no big deal I did it and I guessed and I passed with the help of a little affirmation that Paul Bryant gave me that I'm a genius and I apply my wisdom he told me to say that every single day I never missed a day I've never missed a day in 46 and a half years <laughs> no ways. and then uh, I passed that I passed a college entrance exam by guessing purely guessing it was I really <laughs> felt that there was some sort of higher power or something happening here and then when I first took my first college exam uh, from a, from a class, um, I failed. I got a 27 and I needed 72 to pass. I got a 27. Wow. And I really was depressed and I really was just crying in my car and I was driving home and I was crying and I thought, man, this whole thing's a delusion. I'm not going to have what it takes. And I could hear my first grade teacher talking to me. Mm. I'll never read, write, communicate and amount thing that would go very far in life. I came home and I curled up in a fetal position under this Bible stand in my living room at my parents' house. And my mom came home from shopping and she said, what's wrong, son? What happened? I told her that I blew the test. I guess I don't have what it takes. I guess I'll never be able to do this. And she didn't know what to say. She just paused for a moment. And then she put her hand on my shoulder and she said, son, whether you become a great teacher, healer, and philosopher and travel the world like you dream, whether you ride giant waves on the North Shore that you've done, or whether you return and panhandle on the streets as a bum, I just want to let you know that your father and I are going to love you no matter what. And in that moment of unconditional love, in that moment of certainty and presence and gratitude, uh, my hand went into a fist. I closed my eyes and I saw the vision of the night that I was with Paul Bragg of me speaking in front of a million people. And uh, I said to myself, I'm going to master this thing called reading and studying and learning and teaching and healing and philosophy. And I'm going to do whatever it takes. I'm going to travel a distance and pay whatever price to give my service of love. I'm not going to let any human being on the face of the earth stop me, not even myself. And I made this commitment to myself there was a no turning back moment hmm. and I gave up and I gave up gave a hug to my mom and I went into my room and I got a dictionary out and I started in the very beginning of it and I started memorizing 30 words a day hmm. and my mom tested me on this pronunciation spelling application meaning and, and uh, using it in a sentence and I really really mastered 30 words a day so at the end of 365 days you know you've you've, you've grown your vocabulary wow. and, and I, and I just kept doing that. And for the next couple of years, I basically memorized much of that book. And um, my, my vocabulary grew and I started passing school and then I started excelling and I started reading encyclopedias. I read eight complete sets of encyclopedias and read everything I could get my hands on hours a day. When I was about to turn 19, my mom said, what do you want for your birthday and for Christmas? I was born on Thanksgiving day. And she said, what do you want? And I said, I want the greatest teachings on the face of the earth, the greatest writings that humanity has ever created from around the world, from the greatest minds. She looked at me, you don't need a cheat coach? And I said, no, mom, I want the greatest teachings on earth. Well, she called her brother, who was a, my uncle, 
a professor at MIT in physics and chemistry, and he sent a giant, two giant six by six foot by six foot wooden crates with thousands of books in it no down to our house on a flatbed truck. And they lowered it on the ground and I took a crowbar and opened it up and filled my room with books and just sat for 18 to 20 hours a day reading. The only time I wasn't reading there, I was reading on the way to school and reading on the way back. And I just lived in books and I never stopped that. And I'm still reading every day. That's, <laughs> that's, that's just incredible. <laughs> um, your, all your, your folks and your mom sound like incredible people. And it's like, it's so that, that having their backing and their love is so important. And it sounds like it really changed things for you. Um, one thing which is super interesting and you've said about it, you know, you, 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 you wanted to do things 10 times. You became a voracious reader. How, how do you get through so many books? I mean, it's incredible. And like, what else inspired you to, to read so many books? I mean, you know, like, I think there's a story about you saying you can only read like normal people can only read maybe like one book a month. And if you look at your whole life, that's not actually that many. Um, so, so yeah, how do you speed read and, and you know, what other things are there behind you wanting to consume all this information? Well, I guess when you didn't think you ever would, and all of a sudden you realize you can, it's, it's inspiring. And every day I asked what worked and what didn't work. And I documented what was making me read faster or slower. I noticed if I sat in the sunny glare, I would go slower and I tend to fade out a bit. If I drank water, cool water, if I set up straight, if I had the book at an angle, um, I, I just started documenting what worked and what didn't work and created what was really a, a speed reading class. People started asking me to teach it after a while. I never took a class in it. I just wanted to know what worked for me. And um, I started reading, you know, more and more. And I, I didn't, I, I'm the kind of guy that if I was to go to the bathroom, I would read 10 pages on the way to the bathroom, sit, read another 20 pages, and <laughs> walk back another 10 pages. I'd go to the restaurant, I'd walk and read 10, 20 pages sit and wait for my food, read, you know, so many pages and come back. I used every minute of the day for learning. And I had books always within my grasp uh, when I was in professional school. And I got up at two in the morning, did meditation and yoga for 30 minutes, and then uh, started speed reading. By the time I was 23, 24, I was uh, knocking out four to seven books in the morning between 2.30 in the morning till 6.30. No <laughs> I got a book an hour, a book every 45 minutes. And then I would go jogging, come back in, shower, go to school until the afternoon, go to clinic, and then come back at seven at night and teach whatever the books that I'd read. And I started having students that didn't really care what I was talking about. They just would come to class every night. And that's how I paid. I charged $20 for those sessions, and, and I paid for school that way. I made about $100,000 a year when I was 23, 24, teaching classes every night. And uh, that way I could buy books because I was buying between 40 and 70 books a week. And uh, I was just reading and learning and, and teaching. And I, I never really stopped that except now I'm teaching more and my reading has dropped and it's now a lot online. So I don't have to buy all the books as much now. And people <laughs> get me books all the time. <laughs> but uh, I carry a bag of books with me. I'm always carrying uh, bags of books. Oh, nice. And, uh, there, there's back here. And in my bags, I've carried them. So I'm, I'm reading. Uh, it's my life. So. Waking at dawn, packing the gear, September tour, and up in the air. Stop at the toll, digging for change. Snowy Cape Fold, mountain range. Gotta be quick, so 